So this is episode two of how to write for TV and radio. Now, if you haven't watched the first episode, you should probably go back and watch that first, but if you haven't got six minutes, 36 seconds to spare, then I will do a brief recap. I'll put the link here to the first episode, if you want to check that out anyway. So in the first episode, I discussed how most music that you will write for TV or radio, you will be given a brief, and I outlined what that brief might consist of, and how sometimes it can be quite tricky to decipher what the person who's written the brief is trying to get out of you. So my advice was to get as many reference tracks as you could in order to help you to get closer to what it is thereafter. I was trying to come up with a good way of demonstrating how you do this and I was inspired by listening to John may have been interviewed on Corey Wong's Wong Notes podcast where he was talking about his new album Sob Rock and it sounded to me like he'd written himself a brief. Here's that little clip. I would like to use a Juno and a Roland JX8P and I want to work on some sort of Bruce Springsteen Tunnel of Love song form. Yeah. And I want to sort of harken back to the 80s thing. So inspired by that, I'm going to write myself a brief to write some original music and demonstrate how I can write to that brief. The first piece of music I'm going to write is inspired by one of the tracks on Sob Rock. There's a track on there called Wild Blue, which is a definite nod to some early Dire Straits. And as I'm a big fan of early Dire Straits as well, I'm going to try and write my own early Dire Straits type song inspired by that. So. My brief is going to be, one, I want a song that sounds like early Dire Straits, and two, I want it to be a vehicle for doing some Mark Knopfler style guitar playing. Now that's a pretty broad brief, and to try and narrow it down, I'm going to ask the person who wrote the brief if I can have some reference tracks. Would you be able to provide me some reference tracks to go along with that brief that you've written? Yes, certainly. Here you go. So the reference tracks that I've got uh, given myself are, the classic early Dire Straits song, Soul of Swing, I think that's the kind of archetypal early Dire Straits song. Then, the second one is my favorite early Dire Straits song, which is Tunnel of Love. And thirdly, as it's the track that inspired this, I'm going to look at Wild Blue off Sob Rock by John Mayer for my third reference. So now I've got my three references, the next thing I need to do is analyze those references for elements that give the song its kind of feel, it's flavor, that's spelled F-L-A-V-A, I believe, um, and see what it is about those songs that really give it its essence, so I can try and capture that um, with the piece of music that I write, that hopefully then captures the essence of what the person who wrote the brief is after. So let's go through that process. Now, I can't very well play those songs on this video because the video will probably get a copyright strike and get taken down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the headphones on and listen to it and show you through the process that I use to analyze these things. Right, I've got my headphones on, I've got Spotify loaded up. Now the first song is Songs of Swing. So let's have a quick listen. I think the first thing we need to work out is the key and the tempo. So I know what key this one's in, but let's just have a quick listen. Okay, right, now I'm gonna work the tempo out. Now the way I do this, there's a, um, probably several websites that do this, um, that allows you to tap the tempo on your computer to establish what it is. So let me play this first. Okay, so this is about 149, 150 BPM. So let's get out the trusty notebook. Sounds of swing, D minor. 149 BPM. Now let's look at the chord structure. So it starts in D minor and the verse chords are. Now that's an interesting sound straight away. That's called the, I think, Andalusian cadence or something. It's, if you're in D minor, if you consider it to be in D minor, the five chord is the major five chord rather than the minor five chord, so it's kind of like you're playing. Because it's got the C sharp in it. So it's that kind of flamenco-y sound. So immediately that's giving this song a particular sound. And I'm not sure that's the sound I want to go for in mind, but I'm gonna make a note of the chord, chord sequence here. So we're going, if I consider this to be in F, I'm going to write it out um, using a numbering system. I actually did a video on that. I'll put it here. Um, so I'm going to consider this to be 6 minor, so D minor, which is the 6th chord of 
F major. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's a minor chord. Six minor, five, four, and then if it's in major, you could consider it to be the three major. And then it repeats. One, F, five, four, six minor. Okay, so I've got the rough idea of what I need from that song. So it's all fairly straightforward chords apart from that A major, which is a nice sound. It's a very distinctive sound, and I'm not sure yet whether I want to use that sound because it that can kind of flavour it. If I was going specifically just that as a reference, then I'd probably need to include that chord, but I'm not necessarily, so I'm not going to definitely use that chord. Okay, on to the next song, Tunnel of Love. Right, Tunnel of Love was off their um, was it second or third album, Making Movies. Now, this is my favourite song, and um, of course, straight after it comes Romeo and Juliet. I need to work out the tempo and the key for this one, so let's have a quick listen. Of course it starts with this uh, organ piano intro which is uh, which is really nice, so I'm going to make a note of that because at this stage I'm not looking at the um, instrumentation in the references, I'm just looking at the kind of harmony, but let me write this down. So, Tunnel of Love, just so I remember for later, we've got the organ piano intro. That might be a bit of an obvious thing to nick, but it's uh, if you could write something that fits, that might be worth doing. Anyway, so what key is it in? Let's fast forward to the bit where the band comes in. Right, it's in the same key, it's in D minor. Right, let's get the tempo. Okay, so that's slightly slower. That's about 138 BPM. So if I was just using these two tracks, I'd probably go... I mean, it depends what it's for, but I might split the difference and try tempo somewhere in the middle, or you know, if it wanted to be lighter, I'd probably keep it nearer the faster tempo. So anyway, they're both in D minor, so let's have a look at the chords of this one. Verse. Oh. Right, so what we've got there it starts on the 6 minor, and it goes to the 1, I like that shift down to the 1, 5, now this is an interesting one, it then goes to the 2 major, so that's an interesting chord, because that's not in the, that's not in F major, normally F major would be F mi uh, G minor. But, so that gives you a different sound, so getting crazy on the wall. Okay, so I've jotted out roughly the chords that are being used. Now the interesting thing in this one is using the major second, so you get that. Okay, so I think I've got the idea with that one. Let's move on to the third reference, which is uh, Wild Blue. Okay, we've got Wild Blue on here. So this one is in A minor or C. Let's get the tempo. 
So it's about 125 BPM. These aren't exactly, I needed a rough idea. So that's slower again. Let's work out the chords. Six minor. One, four, two minor. Chorus, five, one, four. Five, four, five, one, four. Okay, and then the little tag at the end of the chorus is like a it sounds like to me so it's like E minor F so that's a three minor to four three minor four five so these are all fairly diatonic chords there's no sort of interesting uh, bits like on sometimes a swing you've got that kind of three major on the other Tunnel of Love, you've got the two major. On this one, they're just diatonic chords, but that's an interesting little turnaround at the end of the... So there's a little tune he plays over that. Okay, so I've got, at this stage, I've got all the information I need for these three references. Now they've all got this kind of stratty guitar sound and that's all kind of that feel. So I know the feel I'm going for and I know the chords that I'm sort of aiming at. They all start on the six minor. So I think from all these elements, I need to start on the six minor. I need that kind of feel and I can pick a tempo somewhere between 125 and 150 BPM to make it kind of work. So I'm gonna have a little play around now and I'm gonna come back when I've got some ideas and show you what I've got. Okay, I've been fiddling around with a few ideas and I've found my loop pedal, which is a good way of jamming out these ideas. And I've decided I'm going to change the key from the, I'm not going to use the same key as the Dire Straits one, so I'm not going to do it in F, D minor. I'm going to drop it a semitone to E. Um, partly because I don't want it to be the same key, and also I like playing in that key because I've got more options of uh, open strings. Now I won't necessarily keep it in this key, but it's a good way to get the kind of sequence going when I'm playing on my own. So. I've, the elements I've used so far, now I'm going to go through the verse first, and I've decided to um, start on the 6 minor, and I like, the, on the, a couple of those songs it drops to the 1 chord, and I really like that sound, I think that's characteristic of the tunes, but I'm going to use it as more of a passing chord rather than um, holding it for a bar, so this is the sort of first sequence I've come up with for the verse, so I'm going to loop it up as well. Okay, so I think that ticks the brief that I can get away with some of that kind of not free style guitar stuff. I've been thinking more through the pattern. I, I think repeating it twice, not necessarily gonna do that. I think the second time might be good. Then I came up with a kind of bridge section, pre-chorus. Major, which nods at the uh, Tunnel of Love. Then the chorus I've come up with is starting on the five, same as the John Mayer tune does. So I think that's the 
sequence I'm going to go with. I'm going to lay down this as a track and the next episode will be showing you how I start to put together the track in my sequencer with the drums, get the basic idea down, put down the guitar, the drums, the bass, any keyboards that are required. And to then at that point, I can then analyze the references for the instrumentation that was used. So I hope that was useful. I hope that gave it some insight into the process. Um, please follow the hashtag MySobRock. That's why I'm gonna put that hashtag on all of these videos so you can easily find them. I'll also create a playlist of them on the uh, homepage of my YouTube channel. So please hit subscribe, follow that hashtag if you can, and I'll see you on the next video.